grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Zeke Fahl, and I'm one of the three vicars here at Martin Luther Church. Today is the second Sunday of our Summer with Romance series. The text for this week is a pretty accurate analysis of human nature, but I don't want to spoil anything for you, so you'll just have to wait for the reading and the sermon to find out more. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Psalm 145, verses 8 to 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Amen. Amen. Romans 7, 15 to 25a. I don't understand what I do, for I don't do the things I want to do, but rather the things I hate. And if I do the very thing I don't want to do, I am agreeing that the law is good. Consequently, what is happening in me is not really me, but sin living in me. I know that no good dwells in me, that is, in my human nature, the desire to do right is there, but not the power. What happens is that I don't do the good I'd intend to do, but the evil I do not intend. But if I do what is against my will, it is not I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. This means that even though I want to do what is right, a law that leads to wrongdoing is always at hand. My inner self joyfully agrees with the law of God, but I see in my body's members another law. In opposition to the law of my mind, this makes me the prisoner of the law of sin in my members. How wretched I am! Who can free me from this body under the power of death? Thanks to be God, it is Jesus Christ, our Savior. When I opened my Bible at the beginning of the week to read this week's text, I instantly noticed the comment I had written in the margins years ago. My guess is that I wrote it during a Bible study when I was still at uni, considering that the um, note is a quote from my pastor back then. It says, Der Oberkacher im Blick auf Menschenkenntnis und Selbsterkenntnis. Translated, it means something along the line of incredibly on the point with regard to the knowledge of human nature and self-awareness. I don't do the good I intend to do. Wanting to do something, but unable to do it. There's so many things in our lives where we think, it would be good to do this or not to do that. Like not, not buying plastic bottles or using single straw, single use straws. To take the bike more often instead of the car. To shop locally instead of online to do more sports and eat less unhealthy food, to call our friends and family more often. I don't know about you, but I often think about doing everything that would be considered the right thing to do for myself, the people in my life, and for the environment. And then things have to get done quickly or I feel like I just don't have the time. And then I end up taking the car after all or once again skipping my yoga session. I don't do the good I intend to do. Wanting to do something, but unable to do it. Apart from those, it would be better if situations that we probably all know 
there are a lot of other reasons why people may want to do something but literally are unable to do them. And often you can't tell from looking at the person. For example, people who suffer from depression or anxiety or a chronic illness, they just often can't do everything they would like to do. What people can and can't do varies from person to person. Some people struggle get, getting out of bed on a bad day, and others struggle asking for help when they're not doing well. And some get an anxiety attack when the phone rings or when they see how many unanswered messages and emails they have. I don't do the good I intend to do. Wanting to do something, but unable to do it. Sometimes we say that we can't do something or that we just don't have the time for something. Or we use it as an excuse when we don't want to get in trouble for something we haven't done. We then say, I would really like to, but yet it isn't, that isn't what Paul is talking about when he says, I don't do the good I intend to do. What he's talking about is a feeling of wanting to do something, but being honestly unable to do it. He talks about the feeling of being unable to act and how that feeling sometimes just doesn't pass. For example, when we have to take a vocabulary test and despite learning for it, we just can't remember the words. When we want to do something, be productive, go out with friends or whatnot, but we are just too tired and exhausted. When we want to laugh and have fun, but a cloud of sadness has a grip on us. I don't do the good I intend to do. Wanting to do something, but unable to do it. In our society, it tends to be incredibly important to be productive. If you aren't able to uh, be as productive as people think you should be, you fall through the cracks especially if one appears to be healthy, but maybe it has a chronic or mental illness, and thus simply can't manage to do the things people think they should. It then happens so easily that people look down on you and judge you, think you're lazy. And when that happens all the time, it is so hard to look at yourself positively, even if you know that you are doing the best you can. It is this feeling of not being good enough that Paul addresses in this part of his letter. When we say, I want to, but I just can't, Paul answers, that is perfectly normal. And you know what? God accepts you as you are. We all want to do so many things, and yet we aren't always able to do them. God knows that and loves us exactly as we are. We can and are allowed to live with this trust, with this faith. We can, we actually shall continuously remind ourselves and other people that a person's worth doesn't depend on their productivity. No one has less worth because they seem to accomplish less than other people. And honestly, who is to say that someone accomplishes less? If you have a chronic illness, Something as seemingly easy as doing the laundry can be a huge accomplishment. We are all God's beloved children, exactly as we are. And I hope with all my heart that we can love each other and look at each other with this kind of love as well. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.
say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all nations. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love to our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling sick, despair, or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for our and all congregations. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who man maintain our buildings. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all who celebrated their birthdays in the past week, especially for Crystal Wendland and Maria Hack. Bless them as they walk into a new year of their lives. Surround them with your love and your grace. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us, in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.